All right, it's good to see you here tonight. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the subject of hope has come. Hope has come. In the outline, number one, hope is light. Hope is light. Number two, hope is the Lamb of God. Hope is the Lamb of God. And number three, hope is coming again. Hope is coming again. You know, in the Old Testament, and I talked a little about this this Sunday, uh, God's glory dwelt in the tabernacle, uh, and we mentioned also uh, the temple there in Jerusalem. In the New Testament, God's glory came to his people again in the person of the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus not only fulfilled Old Testament prophecy, but he truly was the Lamb of God, the bread of life, and the living water. Along with the story of Jesus' birth is the reason Jesus came to earth, and the Bible tells us to seek and to save those who are lost. Jesus' life brought hope to all of mankind. Every living and, bre- every living and breathing person needs hope in their lives. Uh, let's look at this first chapter in the book of John, which declares his hope has come. Father, thank you for this night, and God, I thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. God, I thank you for the Christmas season. God, I thank you that Jesus truly is the hope of this world. And God, as we look at Scripture tonight, I pray that you would just remind us of something in Scripture that we may have forgotten or eaten even in lightness, even more than, than we are, Lord. There, there's always room to learn. There's always thoughts uh, that you give us. So, God, I thank you that you are uh, hope and that you are light. And, God, I thank you that you sent the Lamb of God uh, for us. And, God, just the, the thought of you coming again, God, it just gets me excited So God, just be with us tonight as we study this scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter 1, hope is light. In the beginning was the Word. And you can put the word Jesus in there and you would not uh, be violating scripture in any way. Uh, And when I think of in the beginning, it makes me, it reminds me of Genesis chapter 1, 1. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then Jesus, and in the point of that first part of the first sentence is God was in crea- God was in creation, and Jesus was also there, which means God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit always was. They were not created, all right? They was. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus made the statement uh, in the Gospels, I and my Father are one. And he made other statements like, if you've seen me, you have seen my father. So you can see the relationship of father and son. Uh, Again, there are people that don't believe the Trinity, uh, but folks, we do. We believe God the Father created everything. God the Son, Jesus Christ, uh, came and lived and died for our sins. And God the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and came on the day of Pentecost. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. Now here's where, we, where it is. All things were made through him, and wh- without him, nothing was made that was made. Folks, I believe in creation. Okay, God spoke this world into existence. Jesus was there, and uh, they, they are a part of the Trinity. Now verse 4 says, in him was life. And folks, the, the life, uh, uh, even Genesis says God uh, breathed into man. God gave man life. And so, uh, you know, the li- life, we know what life is. I mean, we are all breathing and we are all alive. And everything that created uh, God was responsible and God was the one and Jesus was the one that gave that life. And the life was the light of men. 
And, you know, we could not survive without light. Okay, light makes plants grow. Uh, there are so many things that light uh, does for us, and that is very important. Matter of fact, 36 times uh, in the book of John, he mentions, he mentions light. 36 times, that's how important that word is. And, and Jesus, his hope in Jesus was life, and he is also the light of men. And light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And, uh, you know, you could go back and, you know, uh, I think of the little, little song we learned a long, long time, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Anybody remember that when they were growing? Okay, I see the hands. Okay. And, and folks, Jesus is that light. If you think about it, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, there was 400 years when, when the, the word was silent. And I am telling you, when Jesus uh, came upon the scene, uh, he was light. And we as Christians are light today, all right? We are light today, and our lights need to shine in a dark, dark world. You want to be depressed? Watch the national news for about an hour. No, I don't, it wouldn't even take that long, okay? <laughs> Watch the national news for 15 minutes. There's so much darkness. There's so much hate. Uh, there's so much killing. You know, folks, I'm telling you, you are not safe anywhere if you just really want to think about it. But I'm not afraid of that. I'm simply saying Jesus is light in that hope. You know, my, my hope is not in this world. My hope is not in mankind. My hope certainly isn't in evolution. You know, these guys that think, we're, you know, the world's going to get better and better and better, you know, they are they're walking in darkness is all I can say. And that's what he is saying here. Uh, 1 John, 1 John 1. Go with me there if you would. 1 John 1, verse 1. The Bible says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard and we had seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of God. And that's what I'm saying. The, you know, the disciples, uh, they hung around with Jesus. They saw his miracles. They saw what he had done. Okay. And even in their writings, they, they, they speak of him being light. And it says concerning the word of life. Okay. And the life was manifested. Okay. Jesus was seen. Jesus was followed. P Jesus was listened to. Why? Because he was giving light. He was shining light. Uh, he was, you know, the way. He was the truth. He was the life. And the life was manifested, we have seen, and bear witness to declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What was the purpose of that light? to give men hope. Folks, that's what the gospel is, all right? We give hope to people. Why? Because of who Jesus is, because of who God is, for what Jesus has done, all right? He, 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 he is our hope. And it says, was manifested that we, uh, which have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And he's talking about Christians. He's talking about what it means to be saved. Okay? God used Jesus to manifest life in light to mankind. Why? So that people would be saved. And He says, And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Now look at verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. Folks, Jesus is light and God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Zero darkness. God is perfect. God is pure. God is holy. Okay, and these are all, these are all characteristics uh, that we need to strive for in our own personal lives. 
And verse 6 says, And if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, folks, God is life. God is light. And his blood, him on the cross, uh, him uh, three days later uh, rising, and he is eternal light, and he is eternal life. So, hope is in Jesus. Now, the second thing I want you to see back in the Gospel of John, a little confusing, First John versus the Gospel of John. Look at verse 6. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And uh, we, we have talked about that before. I won't go into that. This man came for a witness to bear witness of that light. John was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. Uh, John was born six months uh, before Jesus. They uh, had family ties also. And so John, uh, you know, was doing his preaching, and he was more of a wilderness-type guy. But his whole purpose was to let people know that the light of God has arrived. And folks, that's part of our job too as Christians, okay, to share that light with others to let people know what Jesus has done. He is life, and he is light in, in, in what he has done in our lives. That through him, uh, might, that all through him might believe. Folks, the gospel is for everyone. Everyone. And, and Jew, Gentile, back in those days and nowadays, it doesn't matter where, where you're from. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter where you were born or where you were living, folks. God sent Jesus to die for everyone. And he is our light and he is our hope. Verse 8, he was not that light, talking about John, but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Now just go down now to verse 29, if you would. Hope is the Lamb of God. Then the next day, uh, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I mean, when John saw Jesus, it was obvious to him who he was. And when you think of uh, the Lamb of God, you're talking about his son. And even on the cross, he was that sacrificial lamb that died for you and I. Verse 30, this is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. What is he saying? It goes back to Jesus always was. Okay, Jesus always was. Uh, we know of the virgin birth. We understand all that is. But the way all that happens, simply uh, God put the Holy Spirit inside of Jesus' mother, and, and that, that's where Jesus' beginning start here on earth. And it says, I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing him with water. And what was John's nickname? (laughs) John the Baptist. Okay, he was a forerunner of Jesus. Now look at verse 32. And John John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. He was the Lamb of God. And I am telling you, God empowered him with the Holy Spirit uh, while he was... that's, that's how he did the miracles, folks. That's how his words uh, were just, you know, even you know, when he was 12 years old, the word they said, they were astonished in the temple studying and what this, what this kid knew. Okay, why? Because he was the Lamb of God. 
because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And folks, that is so important that we as Christians are Spirit-filled Christians. God is hope. Jesus is hope. Jesus is light. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Folks, that is so important in our lives. As we go about and we live life, we need to walk in the Spirit. We need to talk in the Spirit. We need to witness in the Spirit. Everything that we do in life as Christians needs to be Spirit-filled. And John said in verse 34, And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is light. Hope is light. Jesus is the Lamb of God, and hope is the Lamb. And then the third thing, hope is coming again. Look at John 14 with me. Now, if I just have a running fit on this one, y'all just stay till I get back, okay? I love this scripture. Jesus himself said, let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Folks, if you really think about it, we should not be worried about anything. If God is in control, if he already knows, you know, the next move that we're going to make, if he gives us the Holy Spirit to enlighten us, folks, we have nothing to worry about. Nothing. Let not your heart be troubled. Folks, we worry way too much as Christians. You believe in God, believe also in me. Why? Because God and Jesus were one, according to the word of God. When you see God, you see Jesus. When you see Jesus, you see God. In my Father's house are many mansions. I don't want you to raise your hand on this. But how many, all right, rhetorical question, how many would love to go to heaven tonight? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> uh, why? We all should raise our hand. Well, you told me not to. And here's what I'm saying. I'm saying because of hope, because of belief, because of life, because of light, we, I believe every one of you would do that. I, I would, and again, you know, I want to see my grandkids get older. I, I, I just know I'm going to, I don't know, but I feel like I'm going to get to baptize them. Do, you know, perform their wedding if I live that long. <laughs> but yet, when I think about heaven, Folks, I am telling you, if that doesn't get you, give you hope, there is something wrong, okay? It's like some people say, uh, well, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to die to get there. <laughs> okay? I, I, will, I, I am, I'm waiting for the rapture, and we could all go together. And my whole point, folks, is when God says something, when he says up there's a mansion, it's not a little cabin in in the corner of glory. I don't know who wrote that one, but I'm telling you, if it were not so, I would have told you. This is Jesus. Jesus never lied. God never lies. The Holy Spirit bears witness of God and Jesus. Ye shall know the truth and what? The truth will set you free. And if I go and prepare a place for you, here's the words, I will Come again. I go straight to Revelation when I think of this. Even come now, Lord Jesus. Folks, I still believe. I know I preached through the book of Revelation last year and a little of the year before that. But I believe with all my heart, our redemption draweth not. And man, we are going to the best place 
we can't even imagine what heaven's going to be like. We can't even imagine. And receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hey, I, can you imagine just hanging around Jesus forever? <laughs> That's just crazy. All right? And I think of the Shekinah glory of God. Okay? You, you know, I talked about that Sunday in the Old Testament and the Lord's Supper. It was between the mercy seat. That was the only place. And the only person that got to see that, uh, all right, was the priest, Aaron the priest at that time. And then you go to the temple, and, and again, the, the Holy of Holies was where, where, Jesus, where God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit was. But now, guess what? God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Okay? We can worship God anywhere. I told you Sunday, man, I love Christmas music, and man, I'm, I'm making visits yesterday, and I had the privilege of handing out the gifts that our senior ladies made for, for folks. And, uh, you know, just to sit there and uh, just, for instance, Rose Clark opened it. You would think it was her Christmas, period. She just was giggling and saying, oh, here's some more and here's some more, which was a beautiful thing. But what I'm saying is it's that and, and Christmas and heaven, too. I will come again and receive you that where you are, we're going to be also. Do you realize in heaven, every day is going to be Christmas? Think about it. And it says uh, that you may be there also, and where you know, and where you go, I know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, probably my favorite verse in the Bible I am the way, the way to where? The way to heaven. The truth. The truth of what? The truth of the word of God. In the life. What is Jesus? He's eternal life. And folks, as a minister of the gospel, I am telling you, he is coming again. That hope is there. No one comes to the Father except through me. Folks, we don't have anything to worry. God has got this. He's prepared for us to mansion. Jesus promised he would come again. And in Revelation chapter 19, we just see a glimpse of heaven. Revelation 19, look at verse 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse and he who, he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like flames of fire. On his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one except him, no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dip, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The very same thing in John chapter 1. Is said in Revelation. And the armies in heaven, clothed with fine linen and white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it it should strike the nation. And he himself will rule with a rod of iron. And he himself treads the winepress of fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, well, folks, I believe he's going to split that eastern sky open. We are going to see, you know, literally millions of horses and, and angels and Jesus leading the pack to come down. And, you know, we, we've talked about the battle of Armageddon. He will destroy the, the, the nations uh, in, in Satan and the Antichrist and the beast, and all that. And then the last one, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29. I said, well, let me find Jeremiah. <laughs> there it is. I said in, in the New Testament, John chapter 14, 6, this is probably one of my favorites in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 
29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil. Think about that, folks. The thought of peace. Where does that peace come from? That peace comes from knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. That peace comes from knowing that he is the one in control of life. It's not the government, all right? It is Jesus Christ. It is God to give you a future and a, what's that word there? Hope. Folks, you know, sometimes when I give a gospel presentation and I ask them that diagnostic questions, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? You know, one of the, probably the biggest answer I get most of the time, I hope so. And you know what my next word is? You're telling me you're banking everything that you have on you hope you're going to make. Well, folks, I don't hope so. I know so. It's not an arrogance. It's by the word of God. It's the word of God. So, folks, we have hope. We can give the world hope. And you think about it. Jesus is truly the hope of Christmas. The Christmas. Why? Because his story, the Christmas story is his story. You got to be born to die, folks. And, and it's so important. Then it says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Folks, we're not praying, you know, to, a, to an idol on a shelf or we're not praying to another man. We are praying to God Almighty and and to Jesus Christ. And here's the verse. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Well, folks, you don't just casually go up to Jesus when you are lost. Man, you realize that uh, you are a sinner. You have to realize that God sent his son to die for you. And the only hope you have for salvation is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And folks, that is what Christmas is, hope. And Jesus is truly the hope of Christmas. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you so much for just your word. And I, I just love the word hope. Uh, man, it, it's not a hope-so thing. It's a no-so thing. And God, I thank you that hope is light and God, I pray that we would let our light shine to everyone. And God, I pray even this week, Lord, that we would just think of somebody that needs maybe a phone call or a, a letter or a Christmas card or, or maybe somebody is really needy and we can help somebody. Lord, I, I pray that Jesus and that, that hope and that light would just shine and, and that the Holy Spirit would impress a name that we can that we can even go visit and see. And God, I thank you that hope is the Lamb. God, uh, Jesus is everything to us. And God, I thank you that He lived here on Earth. God, I thank you for thirty-three years, His whole life, He was perfect, the perfect Lamb of God. And God, I thank you that You're coming again. God, I just. Man, you talk about just getting us excited. You know, it's, it's not a thing of arrogance, folks. It's a thing of confidence. God, we are confident in you. We are confident in Jesus. We are confident in the word of God. So, God, I pray that we would just get excited about hope has come. Lord, I just believe with all my heart we can share life and we can share light and we can share hope with people around us. So, Lord, thank you for the Christmas season. And, God, just be with us in a special way. And, God, I just look forward to Sunday and coming back and just uh, gathering together. And then Sunday night, Lord, the adult choir, I've heard bits and pieces of it. And, God, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so, God, we just thank you for what's going on, the Awana program right now and our youth discipleship and 
God, thank you for just being in our church. And thank you uh, for sending the light of the world. The light of the world is Jesus. And God, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.